Hello guys, welcome back to a new video. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make this really cool vintage logo in Illustrator. So yeah, we're going to be using these grunge textures, the link will be in the description for them. And uh, I'll be explaining the fonts as we go along so yeah, you guys can download those for yourself. Um, this first font is called Sports World, I did use this in a previous tutorial. And uh, this font is called Lobster 1.4 or something like that, I don't know. The, the link to both of those fonts will be down in the description below. So yeah, you guys can go click those links and download them for yourself. So yeah, um, so once you're in Illustrator, you want to go to File, New. And uh, yeah, you can copy these down, this should be the default. Um, maybe you'll cut, uh, maybe it'll be set on print, but um, you want to set it to web. And then uh, make sure that the size is on 1280 by 800 and make sure the orientation is landscape well it doesn't really matter but it's a lot I just prefer working in landscape and yeah so yeah uh, this is what you're gonna come up with I'm just gonna use this one just because you guys can see what what we're making and um, I can make it at the same time but yeah they are basically the same uh, same projects so what we're gonna do is we're gonna let's start off by making a new layout so we're not gonna be working on that one so we can just leave that there and we're gonna make our text so you could press T on the keyboard or you could press in the text um, tool up here and you just going to click. And now this is going to be our first word. So my first word is going to be Baz, obviously because that's my name. And uh, yeah, so this yeah, this is Lobster 1.4 but we're going to change it to Sports World because Sports World is going to be the first one that we're going to be using. Just make sure it's all capitals. Okay, cool. So now what we have here is our first text and this is going to be the top line that we have right there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to effect, warp and bold and now allow us to, well you can see what it does, it allows us to make a curve in the top and in the bottom, you can do it vertically or horizontally. Um, they both look pretty cool for vintage logos, I'm going to use horizontal though and we're going to make the bend 25%. You can copy my dig my digits, but they will be different for you depending on the size of your text and the text that you have there. So yeah, it will be different. Just bear that in mind. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is um, we got our text here. We're gonna press Command, Shift, and O. What that basically does is it makes it so that our text isn't editable enough. So we, if we made a spelling error, we can't change it. Uh, but yeah, you just need to make sure that you spelled it right and all that um, before before you do that command. And now what you want to do is you can go to object and then go to expand appearance and now it basically considers the uh, the bulge we added to it and uh, and it just incorporates that into the anchor points and yeah everything looks good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add the, the designs text. So let's just type again so using our type tool again we're just going to type in designs make it a bit bigger and now we're going to change the font to lobster. Again, the um, the links to the, to these fonts will be in the description, and yeah, you can download these for yourself. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that they are in line with each other. So to do that, you're just going to click and drag, and then now you have all these aligning tools up here, and you're just going to click this one, and then it will center them for you, and yeah, it all works really well. So now what we're going to do is we're going to make this just a bit bigger, just so it covers a decent amount of the word. Okay, that looks good. And uh, now we're going to add a, a, um, a warp to it. So then we're going to go to effect, warp, and then arc. And yeah, we have this. Yeah, it allows us to basically curl the text in any way that we want. So yeah, um, let's just try and find one that looks good. So you want it to go with this curve right here. Probably you want to go as parallel as you possibly can without it looking too distorted. But um, yeah, I think 20 is going to look pretty good for that. And yeah, okay, and we're going to move it up just a bit. And uh, we can make it a bit bigger and just move it up just so it kind of goes into the text. Because as you can see on this one, it kind of goes, has an outline there. And yeah, so that's what we're going to make on this on the, on the this main text. So now we've got that, we've got designs and it kind of goes into this text right here. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing as we did before with the other, with this main text. We're going to press uh, Command, Shift and O. And that basically allows us to make the anchor points again. And now we're going to go to object and expand appearance and there we go okay so now that we've got our text right here we, are, we want to add this interval in between the two words and it looks really cool it looks really clean and yeah we're going to add that so we're going to click on our bottom text press ctrl c and ctrl f and what that basically did is it allows us to copy it inside itself so if you press ctrl v like you usually would it would paste it so it goes like it's off to the right 
and we don't really want that. So if you press Control F, it'll just do it inside itself. And um, so we're gonna go now. We're gonna go to our Appearance tab, which is uh, Window, and then Appearance, which is right there. And then we'll open this. We're gonna add a stroke using that button right there, and then increase the pixels just so we get a nice interval. You don't want it too thin or too thick. We just want a nice balance. And um, so yeah, it's all on personal preference really, and on the words that you have that will make it look good. And now we want to do is we're pressing stroke and change the limit to one. What that basically will do is it makes sure that we don't have any sharp spikes in there and be yeah, so it just makes sure that we don't lose that clean effect that we want. So now we've done that, I'm gonna actually increase the stroke just a bit to seven. Okay, so we got that, we added the stroke, we're gonna go to object, then expand appearance, and then go to object and then expand, and then press fill, and there we go. So what we basically did is we incorporated all the um the stroke with the paths and yeah I know it looks really chaotic but you don't need to worry about that and um, so now we want to go back over to our main text and press command 8 and what that does is it makes it a compound path so now we can do some really cool stuff with it like uh, adding the interval so now we're going to do is we're going to add our stroked uh, secondary text and for holding shift we can click on our main text as well and then click on minus front and there we go we have this really cool um, interval in between the two words and yeah it looks really cool and so yeah let's get on to it so we're gonna okay so now we're gonna add these dots and all these aesthetic little symbols I don't know if you call them symbols but yeah they look pretty cool and we're gonna add them so what so we're gonna add these little circles first so it's gonna go to our shape tool you don't have to use um, a circle you can make your own shape you could use any of these right here but we're gonna use circles because that's what we did before and it looks pretty cool and uh, yeah, we're going to hold shift while dragging out because that allows us to maintain the aspect ratio of the shape because if we didn't hold shift it would do this but if we hold, if we hold shift it would make a perfect circle and we just want to make the right size, okay that looks good and then we want it to be in the centre of this main text and then we're just going to hold alt and drag it to this, to this side and that basically copies it over to that side as well and um, yeah, so let's just make sure it's in the right position. Okay, so that looks cool. And now we're gonna add these little, um, they look like handlebars, I'm not gonna lie, they look like handlebars. But um, yeah, so we're gonna use our pen tool and we're gonna make a point to where you want it to start. And then we're gonna add this little curve like that. And maybe make this a bit higher. Just so it kind of follows the curve that you have on the main text. And then we're gonna use this, these arrows to, to um, to make sure it's a stroke and not a fill and now we're going to increase the stroke like that just to make it a bit thicker and now we are going to um, now we are going to use our width tool which is right here you can press shift and w to as a shortcut and uh, we're just going to click on this point and we're just going to extend it out and yeah that looks really cool like that and now what we're going to do is we're going to click on it and go to object expand appearance and that basically added the, um, the anchor points to it instead of it being a regular path. So now we've done that, we're going to press Ctrl C and Ctrl F. And again, that just duplicates it in itself. And, it's, and um, so yeah, and we go to Transform, Reflect, and Vertical. So that basically added a mirror line in between the two and it reflects it to the other side. And then we are, we're just going to drag it over to the other side like that. And now we have this really cool logo and now we're going to add the vintage look to it like we have right here. So to do that we're going to open this up. This will be in the description for you guys to download for yourselves. It is pretty cool and uh, yeah, it allows you to mess around with the things that you... Um, it allows you to mess around with different ones basically. So yeah, we're just going to click and drag into the other tab just like that. And now we need to make sure that it covers the whole thing. So just by holding shift you're just gonna click and drag over and because it is a vector grunge it, the, the quality won't be hindered and yeah, everything will be good so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna hide that real quick and then just so we can edit the text again so we're just gonna highlight everything we've done there and press command and 8 so basically the whole thing is now a compound path and that's what we want just so we can add this vintage look to it so now we have this grunge again uh, we're gonna select it all so we've we have selected the text and the grunge layers. Uh, so you select it all, and now you want to go back to your Pathfinder tool and press minus front. 
and that'll take a while, it might take, well not a while, it might take a few seconds, depending on your computer, if you have a slow computer, it might take a bit longer. Um, but yeah, it shouldn't take too long, and yeah, some loading bars might come up, sometimes they don't, sometimes they do. Okay, so that's done, and there we go, we can just click off, and we have this really nice vintage look to it. So yeah, that's basically how to make a vintage logo. If you've made um, your own vintage logos by my tutorial, be sure to tweet, uh, tweet them at me. Be sure to tweet them at me, and uh, I'll be happy to check them out. And yeah, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for watching the video, and I'll see you guys in my next video.